In this video, I'm going to show you how to create these CGI landscapes inspired by the late 90s and early 2000s. What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dread Labs and I'm a graphic designer and visual artist. In today's video, we're going to design a CGI landscape that you can often see in video games, visualizers, animations, and even ray flyers from the late 90s and early 2000s. The main inspiration that I got for this video was from a design project back in the day called Orion's Arm, but I've seen similar visuals on, like I said, ray flyers and video games from that same era. I think a lot of people can see them nowadays when they search for mixes for jungle or intelligent drum and bass on YouTube. Some people even refer to them as early PlayStation graphics, and I guess you can also see it that way. So last year I explored this aesthetic in my Creatober series, and I got some comments and DMs on it if I would like to share my method on how to create this style. If you want to see the full time lapse of how I created this poster, there's a link down in the description. So in this video, I'm going to break down what defines this style, I think, and I'm going to show you a couple of methods on how to create a poster or flyer like this in Cinema 4D. So without any further ado, let's dive into the video. So depending on when you were born, this aesthetic can give you a weird feeling of nostalgia. At least it does for me. The main thing that defines this style, I think, is the oddly emptiness and surrealism that surrounds these landscapes. But I think the goal of these graphics at the time was to create something that looks really realistic. To me, it kind of looks like a liminal space or something, but I think the reason why these aren't looking that realistic is the render engines. Of course, back in the day, their hardware wasn't nearly as powerful as the hardware that we have access to right now. Because today, of course, we have these really powerful graphics cards and render engines like Octane and Redshift to create super realistic materials and textures. I actually really admire the people that designed this style back in the day because they simply had to make do with what they had available for them. So that being said, I think the best way to try and recreate this is with the standard renderer in Cinema 4D. When I first started using Cinema 4D, I absolutely hated the standard renderer because I wanted to make really realistic stuff but right now I actually think that's what's coming in handy. So we'll open a new Cinema 4D project and right away we're gonna go to the render settings and make sure that we have the standard renderer. The first thing we're gonna do is create a surrealistic sky. So under here let's add a sky object and we're gonna create a new material for it and we can check off every one of these boxes and check on luminance and we're gonna go with a noise texture and into this noise texture, we're going to change a couple of things. First off, the type of noise we're going to change to turbulence. The global scale, we're going to change to 1000. Horizontal scale to 10,000. And the Y scale to 20%. And this creates these like nice stripes, I guess. Uh, and these should be able to simulate some sort of sky or clouds. At least that's what I'm going for here. Next, we want to create a little bit more contrast. So we'll change the contrast to 15%. By the way, guys, these numbers aren't set in stone and you're completely free to experiment with these. So we'll go back and under the texture, we're gonna click on colorizer. This will basically create a gradient map where we can change the colors of the noise that we just made. So first we're gonna drag in the black here and we're gonna change that black to a kind of desaturated darker blue, something like this. Around the middle, we're gonna change this to a slightly like a lila or a violet color, I guess. And we're gonna drag in the white here a little bit and we're gonna double click and we're gonna make a slightly light violet as well. Next, we're gonna make sure that this is all in a layer. So if we click on that layer, you can see the colorizer with the noise inside of it and we'll click on effect and we'll click on use saturation lightness and we'll desaturate this a little bit, maybe to minus 17 or something like that. And we'll just drop this onto the sky. Next, let's start off with our land. We're gonna make a plane. We're gonna make it a thousand by a thousand and we're gonna give this 200 segments on each side. And I'm gonna change my display to Garo shading line so you can actually see what we're gonna do here in terms of the lines and the subdivision. Next up, we're gonna add a displacement deformer and I'm holding shift on my keyboard to immediately make this a child of our displacer as you can see in the layer menu here. I'm gonna change the height to 75 centimeters and under the shading tab, we'll add a noise. And of course, this doesn't look nearly as a normal landscape. Uh, so what we want to do is change the noise type to self Voronoi. I will change the global scale to 1000%. And as you can see, we now have different like plateaus uh, that kind of simulate some of kind of landscape, I guess. Uh, and if you're not satisfied with this particular distribution, of course, once you make the global scale larger, you'll have larger plateaus. Thinking of it, uh, maybe you want to change this to 1250. Uh, and you can also change the seed in order to randomize your plateaus a little bit. And next, 
we're gonna add a subdivision surface. And like, as you can see right now, the edges are a little bit softer if we zoom in. And in the distance, I wanna kinda have some mountains available. So what we're gonna do is go to our objects here and add a landscape here. So the landscapes, I'm gonna make 750 by 200 by 750. And I'm just gonna move these to the back here. And by holding control or command on my keyboard, I'm basically duplicating these a couple of times. And of course, you're free to experiment with these uh, I'm going to change the seed on these a little bit, so we have a couple of different mountains. Something like this should do the trick, I think. I'm also going to grab a connect object and I'm going to drop in the landscapes in there. I'll show you later why. For now, let's rename the connect to mountains and the subdivision surface to ground. Let's add in one more plane and I'm going to make this quite large actually. 10,000 by 10,000 centimeters with a width and height segments of 500 by 500. We're also going to add a displacement deformer on this one. So we'll hold shift to make this a child. We'll change the centimeters to five. So the height is five centimeters now. And I'm going to add a shader. We're going to change this to turbulence. I'm going to up the octaves to 13 and the global scale to 350. I'm going to lower this a little bit. I'm going to change the name of the plane to water. And I'm going to move the water down slightly. Something like this is fine. Position my camera something like here and now we'll create some materials for these let's start with the simplest one i'm going to change that name to water i'm going to uncheck color check on transparency and change the refraction preset to water let's drop that on our water material where i will edit we'll name the material for the sky let's add a new material let's call this ground under the color we'll add a noise texture we'll change the noise to fbm and we'll change the global scale to 500 percent and we're going to colorize this with some ground or army colors so we'll click on colorize again we'll add some really desaturated greens and maybe also a beige color of some sorts and we'll apply that to the ground we'll copy and paste this material and we'll change this one to mountains and we'll give this a deeper green color so we'll up the saturation just a little bit and under our noise we'll change the noise scale to 5000 and we'll apply that to the mountains let's take a quick look at what our scene looks so far with the render viewport and as you can see we're already getting somewhere actually it looks pretty nice so as you can see the main difference here is that all of our materials aren't based on real life we're not using any textures high quality photographs hdri maps nothing like that we're just using noise patterns colors and textures that we can generate within Cinema 4D itself. I think this is also kind of where the charm lies of this style. So what we're going to do next is add in some vegetation. Before we do that though, I want to ask you something. Would you like to get access to this Cinema 4D file and many, many more Cinema 4D, After Effects, Photoshop and Illustrator files? You actually can by becoming a member of my Patreon channel. If you do not know, I've been making videos on graphic design and 3D work for the past couple of years. I'm almost reaching 500 videos on my channel, all of which are tutorials. Doing that takes a lot of time. I need to write a script, record a video and edit it later. And I wouldn't be able to have time for that if it weren't for my patrons. You see, if I wasn't able to make enough income out of Dreadlabs, I would be forced to get a day job. And if I had a day job, I probably wouldn't have the time to create these videos for you guys. I want to keep all of these tutorials free and thanks to my patrons, I'm able to do that. So I just want to take the time to give a huge shout out to all of my members on Patreon right now. Because without you, there wouldn't be a Dreadlabs. If you become a patron, you'll get access to a ton of perks as well. Like I said, you'll get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials. You'll also get access to all of my past live streams where you can see my full design process. A permanent 15% discount in my asset web store where I sell textures and more. And an exclusive role in the Dreadlabs Discord community server where we have over 3000 creatives that come together, ask questions, answer questions, give each other feedback and learn how to grow as a creative person. There's also a slightly higher tier that gives you access to even more exclusive tutorials and an additional 100 project files from my Creatober series. So if this all sounds interesting to you and if you want to support my cause, there's a link down in the description to become a member of my Patreon channel. Of course, I do understand that not everyone has the budget to become one. So I just wanted to quickly mention that you can become a member of my Patreon and unsubscribe after one month because this gives you access to all of the project files available already. However, this will prevent you from getting access to the future project files and new ones are added every single month. If you do not have any budget whatsoever, of course, it's completely fine. I can understand that. But if you still want to support my channel, you can leave a like and a comment down below in this video 
because this will actually really boost this video in the algorithm. I've seen a massive difference since you guys started doing that more often, so it actually makes a difference. I would also recommend subscribing to my channel and clicking on that notification button to never miss a future tutorial. I've heard from some of my subscribers that I don't really pop up in their feed as much, so clicking on that notification button will probably help and make a difference to that as well. Thank you in advance for supporting me and my channel, and for now, let's continue back with the tutorial. So right here, I have some models of a tree and a fern. These are from Megascans, if I'm not mistaken. Well, you can probably find any similar vegetation 3D models on websites like TurboSquid and CG Trader. For now, let's copy this fern and we'll paste this into our scene. And basically, we we'll want to clone this so that it appears all over our landscape here. We want the trees to appear on the mountains and we want the ferns to appear on our land here. So we're going to hold all our option and click on the cloner to make the fern a child of the cloner. And instead of the grid mode, what we're going to do is grab the object mode and we're basically going to drop in the plane as the object. And as you can see, the ferns are started cloning around our uh, image here. Uh, what I'm going to do is because we're going to use a lot of these ferns, I'm going to change the instance mode to multi instance and change the viewport mode to matrix. This makes it so that all of these little squares basically represent a fern, but we can only see those when we render this. So this speeds up our workflow a little bit. Next, you wanna check on a line clone if it's not checked on already and change the up vector to plus Y. This makes it so that all of the plants are facing upwards. And let's change the count to maybe 2000 ferns. Maybe a little bit too much. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, it's a little bit much maybe. So what we wanna do is go to transform and we'll change the scale of all of these ferns to Let's do 0.3, I think. So let's change the count to maybe a thousand to make it a little bit less drastic, I guess. So the next thing we wanna do is distribute these only above water. I'm just gonna place a camera here because I kinda like the view, but now we can zoom out. And as you can see, they're also appearing underwater here. Uh, so the way we can counter that is with a field and a plane effector. So with our cloner selected, we'll just change the cloner here to ferns and we're gonna hold our mouse here and go to plane so under the parameter here let's check off position and check on scale check on uniform scale and type in minus one what this means is basically the plane now does not have any deformers or effectors or whatever but this will change every single burn in the cloner to a scale of minus one essentially making them invisible next we want to go to fields and add a linear field. We'll change the linear field to negative Y so that it moves downward. I'm gonna scale this down. So we'll change the length to something like one centimeter. And as you can see, the lower we go, the lower the plants start appearing. And if we do it this way, I think this is a nice height for all of these ferns to appear. And now let's see what this looks like. I'm gonna create a new default material. We'll call this fern and we'll simply color these green. We'll make a new material as well and we'll call this trees and we'll just do a subtle noise and we'll just change this one to a dark green and this maybe to like a brown and let's grab our tree. We'll paste this in, put it into a cloner again. We'll call the cloner trees and we're basically gonna repeat these steps here. We're gonna change the mode from grid to object here and this is why we put our mountains in a connect object earlier because now with the connect object, the cloner sees all three of the mountains as one object. So we can just drop in that on object and we'll change the up vector to plus Y and we'll scale these down to 0.4 perhaps. And we'll change this to 2000 and we'll change this to minus 90. I think I also saw this on, saw this on the ferns, but the cloner kind of rotated the trees in the wrong way. If we change this to minus 90 and make sure that the up vector is plus Y, we should be good to go. And next, we also want to basically do the same thing with the plane here. So we'll just make a new plane with the trees cloner selected. Check off position on the plane and check on scale and uniform scale and type in minus one. And under the fields, let's add a linear field again. You can also use other fields like a spherical field if you just want to cover one of the tops or something like that. Uh, I think for me, linear field will just work nicely. Uh, we'll just mi do minus Y again. And as you can see, if we have a certain size of the uh, field, it will just scale down uh, because this is like it, the height of the field is 100 centimeters. If you change this to one centimeter or maybe even zero, then it's just literally appearing. There's no like fade between zero and 100 centimeters where the trees scale down. They just appear or they won't appear. Let's go back to the ferns again. Uh, for now, we'll, with the trees, we'll change this to multi instance and change this to a matrix. And we'll just change this to the instances here so we can see what's going on with our ferns here. We can fix it like this. 
And I think we're able to do that, yeah. And we can change this now to multi-instance again. And now let's see what our render looks like. We forgot to put our material on the trees. It looks pretty cool. I think I want to increase the number of trees here. So maybe we'll do 20,000. I hope that doesn't screw up my computer. See what happens. Maybe too much. Uh, let's go with maybe 5,000, maybe something like that. This is always a little bit of a trial and error. You probably know that if you do Cinema 4D often. Uh, and of course, what you can do is the random deformer as well to change the scale and the rotation of those trees to add a little bit more variation. Let's do that right now. So with the trees cloner selected, I'm going to change mine to random. And of course, I don't really want to randomize the position here, at least not in the Y direction. Uh, but I think I'm going to leave position altogether and just change the rotation here, maybe like with 60 degrees. We'll do uniform scale and maybe like 0.25. It's maybe a little bit much, so we'll do 0.1. Yeah, it's still a little bit much, so maybe we'll do just do a really subtle one, something like this. So 0.05 actually works pretty well. Well guys, there you have it. a couple of techniques in order to create the CGI landscapes back from the zeros. Sadly, my Cinema 4D crashed just now, but don't worry, however, if you want to get this project file for yourself, I will make sure to recreate it and put it up on my Patreon channel. If you find this video useful, please leave a like and a comment down below. If you have any tutorial suggestions for me, please let me know either down in the comments, on Discord or maybe on Instagram or X. And if you have not done it already, please subscribe to my channel because that would really, really help me out. It does make a difference. So with all of that being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I hopefully see you guys in the next tutorial.